Transitioning to electric cars and renewable energy will save the world $17 trillion, according to an Oxford study. If this wasn't compelling enough evidence for the detractors, then nothing ever will be. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. And this really goes along with what I've been saying, what I've been preaching for a long time now. Yes, renewable energy saves money, a lot of money. It simply makes pure mathematical sense. And that's today. Imagine how much sense it will make when batteries are significantly cheaper by 2030, right? Think about this, right? Tesla just started doing something that's changing the game for them. Using lithium ion phosphate batteries in their energy storage products. That actually makes those batteries probably about... 70% cheaper. You're probably thinking, no, it doesn't. Yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, Viking. Well, actually, it does. I'll tell you why. Lithium ion phosphate batteries, on average, get three times as many charging cycles, right? In addition, you can discharge them to zero, charge them to 100%, and you get no battery degradation and losses as a result. Plus, CATL's new battery chemistry has about 20% higher energy density for no extra cost. CATL have said that publicly. Our batteries cost nothing more. Nothing more, 20% more energy density. In addition, lithium ion phosphate batteries are cheaper than ternary batteries, approximately by 10 to 40%, depending on where you source them from. In general, they're at least 70% cheaper. If you consider the lifetime of the battery, Easily 70%. I could be even underselling it. When you think of the number of charges you're getting additional, the, the higher energy density we're now seeing from lithium ion phosphate batteries, and the fact that you get very little charging loss in discharging to zero and charging to 100. So you're theoretically getting actually a fair bit more out of that battery. If you think about it, right? A ternary, ternary battery, you're really meant to only use it to down to about 10% and then charge it to maybe 80 to 90%. So you're actually getting 20% less capacity. For more money, LFV batteries are changing the game when it comes to energy storage. There's no question about it. People just don't realize that over the last six months, they have started to transition battery packs globally, big energy storage packs and smaller ones globally, and Tesla's doing it now, from ternary batteries to LFP. Now, aside from that, a fast transition to renewables will save the world $18 trillion dollars. And this Oxford study doesn't even take into account everything I just mentioned about energy storage. This new study found it is not only possible to fully decarbonize the global energy system within a few decades or less, it will be profitable and save the world at least US 12 trillion or Australian 18 trillion dollars. If it reaches the target by 2050, if we reach it earlier, we save even more than that. In fact, if we reach it by 2040, we could save 20 trillion US dollars, that is. This new study led by Oxford University and including Australia's Monash University, published in the journal Jewel, features a fast transition scenario that ramps up investment in solar, wind, batteries, electric vehicles, and green hydrogen. Now, this thing, the thing is right. These so-called fast transition strategies, they're always pretty slow in compared to what really happens in the real world. I'll tell you why. The reason for that, the IEA, the International Energy Agency Administration, whatever they're called, they always undersell these fast transition strategies. They always predict that even the fast scenario, right, ends up being slow. That's what happens. The truth is that the energy market is actually adapting very quickly to cost changes. Now, here in Australia, Billions of dollars are being invested in renewable energy. Why? Because it simply makes pure economic sense. Companies come in, they invest the money. Even US companies, quite a few US companies are coming into Australia right now, investing massive, massive sums of money because it simply makes financial sense. This will happen more and more all over the world very, very quickly. Why? Renewable energy costs are going down. Believe it or not, why? Energy efficiency, massive increases, wind turbines getting bigger and more efficient. Everything is improving drastically. Now, this study says that the conversation around the costs of transition to zero carbon energy because of the plunging costs of renewables and storage technologies 
and also the soaring cost of fossil fuels proves that renewable energy is going to save us trillions of dollars. Accelerating the transition to renewable energy is now the best bet, not just for the planet, but for energy costs too. This is what I've been saying for a long time, says lead author, Dr. Rupert Way, a postdoctoral researcher at the Smith School of Enterprise and Environment. Now I've got to, I can't really take credit for this. I got all this from Tony Sieber back in 2014. I used to watch his YouTube channel and I still do, Rethink X. In fact, also from some of the professors at Singularity University who were talking about this stuff really about 10 years ago and saying that mathematically, this is what would happen. They made these predictions. They got it right. I can't take credit for this at all. And they're what influenced my thinking and really helped me to understand the mathematics behind what was happening and what would happen. What Oxford University says is absolutely true. But the only thing that's not true is their predictions for a so-called fast change. It's going to be faster than their fast rate prediction. Past models predicting high costs for transitioning to zero carbon energy have deterred companies from investing until now and made governments nervous about setting policies that will accelerate the energy transition and cut reliance on fossil fuels. You know, another thing's helping this, Russia. They're helping speed this up. Europe doesn't want to be dependent on Russia for energy. And that is actually helped pushing some of the market as well. Our latest research shows scaling up key green technologies will continue to drive their costs down. The faster we go, the more we will save. The study analyzed thousands of transition cost scenarios produced by major energy models and used data on 45 years of solar energy costs, 37 years of wind energy costs, and 25 years of battery storage. This is a serious study that took a lot of work. There's a lot of data here. It found that the cost of key storage technologies such as batteries and hydrogen electrolyzers are likely to fall dramatically in the same way as the costs of wind and solar have fallen over the past two decades. Twice as much as even the most ambitious forecast in the case of solar. So solar costs have come down twice as much as even the most ambitious forecasts anywhere in the world. But the cost of nuclear has increased consistently over the past five decades, and the technology is unlikely to be competitive with renewables and storage. Carbon capture and storage is also unlikely to show any improvement. Now, for those of you emailing me, telling me this, the solution for the world's energy needs is nuclear, um, let me just repeat that. But the cost of nuclear has increased consistently over the past five decades, and the technology is unlikely to be competitive with renewables and storage. Now, I used to believe that nuclear was part of the solution. Mathematically, though, if you start to really do the research and you don't just read the drink the Kool-Aid and um, have this idea in your head that you think is good, but be flexible, be willing to learn. The truth is nuclear is no longer a good part of the solution for future strategy. Now, yes, keeping some nuclear plants running right now is absolutely necessary as we transition to renewables, but... Once that has happened, they will no longer be economically feasible or logical to keep on running them. That's a simple mathematical fact. The study says most projections have and continue to underestimate the continued cost reductions in the key technologies, wind, solar, and electrolyzers. And this has affected projections and policy guidance from key international bodies such as the IPCC and the International Energy Agency. Now, Tony Sieber has been railing against the international agency for years because of these ridiculous so-called projections that they make, which are always, always wrong. They're always predicting things will go much slower than they actually do. The problem is these predictions affect governments. They affect businesses. These businesses listen to these retarded projections and make decisions based on them. And they're never right. Don't listen to the IEA. They're always wrong. For instance, a histogram of all 2,905 projections of the annual rate at which solar PV system investment costs would fall between 2010 and 2020 found that the mean value of these projected cost reductions was 2.6%. Solar PV costs actually fell by 15% per year. Now, if these clowns had have listened to real experts, such as the people I already referenced, they would have realized what was going to happen based on historical trends, not on the IEA. I don't know who funds those guys, but they're ridiculous. This makes it clear that it would have been a bad idea to treat these projections as conditional forecasts, the report says. The Oxford study seeks to prove that low costs can 
and should be dialed in. There is a pervasive misconception that switching to clean green energy will be painful, costly, and mean sacrifices for all of us. But that is just wrong, says Professor Doyne Farmer, who leads the team that conducted the study at the Institute for New Economic Thinking at the Oxford Martin School. Now, there's really no reason for these guys to make any of this up. They're not being paid for by anyone. There's no fossil fuel funds going on here. There's, there's, no, there's basically no lobbying. These guys are just saying it how it is. Renewable costs have been trending down for decades. They're already cheaper than fossil fuels in many situations, and our research shows they will become cheaper than fossil fuels across almost all applications in the years to come. And if we accelerate the transition, they will become cheaper faster. Completely replacing fossil fuels with clean energy by 2050 will save us many trillions of dollars. The findings of the Oxford research echoes that of the Australian-based Climate Council released on Tuesday, which showed that a rapid switch to renewables will offset and negate the crippling impacts of inflation from surging fossil fuel costs, not to mention national security issues. So in other words, if we transition to renewables faster, we can actually offset some of the inflation. So maybe the Biden administration do have a clue about what they're doing. Maybe they're aware that the switch to renewables will help to actually reduce inflation. I mean, I hadn't thought of this before, but it does seem possible. If we're able to reduce electricity costs as a result, it would make sense, right? Of the three principal scenarios, the fast transition gets the world close to the Paris climate target of 1.5 Celsius, assuming emissions from agriculture and land use change are also brought under control. Short-term storage and electrification of most transport are achieved with batteries, whereas long-duration energy storage, LDES, and all hard-to-electrify applications are served by power to X or P2X fuels, such as hydrogen electrolysis and using hydrogen itself or to make other fuels such as ammonia and methane as needed. It says this corresponds to an electrify almost everything scenario. That's what this channel stands for. Electrify everything. Farmer says the world has become increasingly dependent on high cost, insecure, polluting fossil fuels that also come with very, very volatile prices. This study shows ambitious policies to accelerate dramatically the transition to a clean energy future as quickly as possible are not only urgently needed for climate reasons, but can save the world trillions in future energy costs, giving us a cleaner, cheaper, more energy secure future. And I believe it's gonna bring a lot of people out of poverty. I firmly believe that. I've been saying that for a long time now, and I'm gonna stick with it. The study was based on more than a century of fossil fuel price data. and was actually completed before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which has caused an even more dramatic surge in the cost of fossil fuels and inspired many governments to accelerate the transition toward renewables. In other words, the numbers in this study, right? This 12 trillion US dollars, it could be a lot more than that based on recent events over the past six months. The research is a collaboration between the Institute for New Economic Thinking at the Oxford Martin School, the Oxford Martin Program on the Post-Carbon Transition and the Smith School of Enterprise and Environment at the University of Oxford and Sodar Labs at Monash University. You know what? This is all great news because we're going there regardless. It's going to happen. It might be the fast route. It might be the super fast route. Either way, it's coming. 100% renewable energy is coming to the world. Now, by the way, for some of you who are saying, no, 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 it's not coming to Africa. Well, Kenya, I believe, has already hit about 96% renewable energy. So I think it's possible for every country in the world to hit 100% by 2050. And in fact, many, many countries will get there by 2030. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Let me know in the comment section below what you think and how this report makes you feel. Frankly, it makes me feel fantastic.